Hello internet friends! In today's video we are going to be talking about spring 2024 denim trends. Now apologies in advance if I sound a little nasally and congested. I am just getting over battling with a flu slash cold but I promise I feel a lot better than I actually sound. Now I have already done a deep dive into all things spring 2024 trends. However I did want to narrow in specifically on denim a little bit more just because I think there is so much fun to be had in the denim space right now. It just feels like anything goes in denim and I want to talk about some of my personal favorite trends. So without further ado, let's dive into these denim trends. The first one has to be the barrel leg. I am seeing this everywhere. I have two pairs myself and I can't stop wearing them. They are my absolute favorite go-to denim pieces. I am seeing a little bit of different takes on what qualifies as barrel denim and I will say I feel feel like the shape of them is just constantly evolving. This is what I think the original barrel concept looked like. And then it kind of has started to morph into a lot more of this like horseshoe style. You're seeing a little bit more of like a Western influence with this. Very much reminds me of like rodeo style denim jeans. I think it's something very unique and different, which I think is always fun to see in a trend space is something that we've never really seen before. This is just a completely different take on denim. My personal favorite that I'm seeing done online is the Levi's Japan made barrel crop. I think these are the closest to the original barrel jeans that I purchased. As far as quality goes, these will be top tier, top level denim jeans you can invest in. They are salvaged, so they just have that quality and that integrity to them. As far as price point goes, they are definitely going to be on the pricier side, but I think as far as cut goes, they resemble so much of the original Levi's that I purchased. As far as like extreme hot take style on these, I'm really loving the citizen of humanity which is kind of weird i haven't really gravitated too much towards coh lately but i am really liking the cut and style on this also free people anthropology they're doing some really good hot takes on the horseshoe barrel crop as well dark wash denim it feels so funny sometimes when i talk about trends like this because i feel like dark wash denim just it never goes out of style like why wouldn't we always have this on our trend list Sometimes though, having that thought process is important because then it reminds me, trends don't mean that we need to go out and buy new stuff. It's just a constant like reminder or like helping you translate these things into your already existing wardrobe. I have like four pairs at least of dark wash denim jeans. I have dark wash denim tops, you name it. My wardrobe consists of a constant rotation of dark wash denim. I think the reason I gravitate so much towards dark wash though is because it really embodies the originality of Levi's denim jeans or like some of the first denim that we saw in production. It was always a dark wash, rugged make. And I think there's something so utility about that that I am always drawn to. So seeing this more and more pop up on the trends list is just making me so happy. I love seeing it. You will never not find dark wash denim in my wardrobe. My personal favorite right now, I would have to say anything from J. Crew's catalog. J. Crew, out of anybody at the moment, probably has some of the best selection of denim jeans right now. I feel like they have every aspect covered. But my personal favorite, as far as style goes, definitely has to go back to the Levi's denim, the original, the OGs. Levi's has a really good line right now where they take from their older catalog and they reproduce this. It is, it is a bit more expensive, so I'm just gonna warn you right now, it's on the pricier side. But let me tell you, those looks, though that that cut of denim is going to last you a lifetime. These are utility jeans. These are meant to be worn. I've done a lot of deep dives in the past on Levi's denim. So I feel like anytime I find anything at the thrift store, I always end up doing like this whole separate segment on how much I just love Levi's denim. I just feel like the reproduction line is so slept on right now. Like it's really not anything that anybody is constantly talking about, but every single time I end up on their website researching denim, I just like, I can't help but just stare in awe at their reproduction line. Okay, now we're gonna cover denim on denim. I feel like this one's such an easy thing for me to accomplish because this is like built into my uniform. I feel like at least 
once or twice a week, I end up wearing some form of denim on denim. I have a Uniqlo button-down denim shirt that I love pairing with my wide leg Levi's denim jeans, the dark wash. Again, it's like light wash on top, dark wash on bottom. This is one of my favorite go-to looks. It just feels like such a consistent outfit formula for me. And you know, don't get me wrong, I feel like denim on denim, a lot of times people just think back to like early Y2K days with the Canadian tuxedo style. You know, nobody wants to go like, full Britney Spears and Justin Timberlake award show status. That's just ingrained in our heads and we're sometimes a little bit too afraid to dip our feet into this trend. But there are so many times throughout history that we can call back to this look and realize that denim on denim doesn't need to be done in a tacky way. There's so many different like cool girl aesthetic ways to pull this together. This Banana Republic oversized denim shirt has to be my personal favorite. I just love the cut of it. I love the oversized fit. I mean, I that's just always what I gravitate towards is anything oversized. But I think the the thing that doubles down on the Banana Republic shirt for me is the fact that you can wear it as a jacket, shacket, you know, you can wear it as an oversized shirt. However you wanna style it, it just doubles as multiple different things in your wardrobe. And I think sometimes that's important when you're shopping for new pieces, especially when it comes to transitional seasons. It always is nice to have something that serves multiple purposes. Cuffed jeans. As a petite person, this one just seems like something I've always been doing. Uh, if I don't wanna hem my clothes, if I don't wanna get it tailored or altered, I will always just cuff my jeans. So I'm very excited to see this on the trend list. No complaints here. I think dark wash denim is probably the cleanest look when it comes to cuffing jeans. And I think why is because the contrast that it creates when you do light wash, it's too close to the same color when you're flipping up the cuff. When you flip up that cuff on the dark wash denim, it just is such a high contrast that there's something so unique about it. And I think that's what draws us in to that dark wash denim style. I think I just lucked out on those Levi's high loose jeans that I've had in my wardrobe forever. I feel like they look great uncuffed, but the moment I cuff them, I feel like they create a whole different type of denim jeans for me. Also, the really nice thing about this trend is this requires absolutely nothing new in your wardrobe. This is just something that you can take your pre-existing wardrobe and cuff your jeans. You don't have to go out and and buy a whole new pair of denim jeans to create this look. Straight leg denim. Now, if you haven't watched my 90s video yet, I would highly recommend watching that next because I talk at length about 90s trends and straight leg denim definitely is a 90s trend in my book. The straight leg denim that I own right now, I have had my wardrobe for what feels like an eternity and I just feel like there's something that holds their integrity and that to me is what's important. Whenever I talk about skinny jeans and saying that I just don't think there's something that's gonna come back around, I think it's more so in the sense of like that poly spandex stretch that just doesn't, it doesn't hold up, if that makes sense. If anything, I would say I tend to lean more towards investing in the straight leg denim trend as opposed to anything with skinny jeans because of the integrity and the value that it can provide for your wardrobe. To me, I still feel like I'm wearing skinny jeans in a lot of ways. Personal favorite as far as shopping for straight leg, definitely Levi's. I mean, Levi's typically tends to be close to that 100% mark of cotton. If not, they're like anywhere from like 90 to 99% cotton. So you're always gonna get that like stiff denim quality. And weirdly enough, I never in a million years thought I would say this, but Abercrombie and Fitch, they, I have two pairs of their 90s high rise jeans and they're, they're seriously some of the best jeans I've ever come across, which feels so weird because for the longest time, I mean, Abercrombie and Fitch always kind of felt like Forever 21 in a way, but they've really come a long ways as far as the quality of their clothes and also as far as size range, that's another thing that I am really impressed with seeing. Baggy jeans. Baggy jeans can feel a little confusing right now because when you look on the trend list or if you look at any website and you type in baggy jeans, a lot of times barrel crop is coming up. Barrel crop and baggy jeans, I feel it can be easily married together. I think with the baggy trend though, if you wanna go extreme baggy, it's almost important to find a cut or a style or even like a feel to the pants 
of being maybe a little bit more of like a tensile finish. With that, you can get a little bit more flowiness to them. With the baggy cut, you almost don't wanna go for a stiff denim. Having that like tensile finish to them almost gives it more of a dress pant feel. And I think the movement is gonna be a little bit more comfortable because when you go for that stiff denim, sometimes walking creates that like swoosh factor and it's just a, it's a little weirdly uncomfortable. My personal favorite right now is Uniqlo. Again, I think they are delivering, they, they pretty much always deliver every year with like some kind of a baggy pant, but having something that's like baggy and airy, I think it's good for spring because they're like such a good transition piece and they really let you breathe a little bit more. Okay, last but not least is the puddle jeans. This one is such a weird one for me. I was really surprised to see this on the trend list, but here it is, puddle jeans. Puddle jeans means like a little pool that form at the bottom of your feet. There's something about it that just doesn't look finished. I guess I see both sides. I like the uniqueness of it. I would never think differently of seeing somebody with puddle jeans on. I think honestly, I would look at them and be like, that's pretty cool, that's pretty stylish. I wouldn't look at them and think like, she didn't get those tailored. I would think that it would be intentional. A really cool hack that I saw recently on Instagram was a safety pin hack for the puddles, like the back of the jeans, safety pinning them up so that part doesn't fall, but the puddle only hits on your shoe. And I think that's what's important, is hitting on the shoe, not on the ground. You don't wanna do like the early Y2K days of just your flare denim jeans being soaked up to the knee because they hit the ground. You want something that is going to look like it's hitting the ground, but doesn't quite make it that far. So I think that safety pin hack was such a cool thing to kind of come across and see and like think realistically about. My personal favorite has to be the J. Crew denim catalog. They have two pairs of puddle jeans, specifically named puddle jeans too. If you do want to dip your feet into this puddle trend, no pun intended, I do think the cool aspect about this is investing in a pair of jeans like this also gives you the opportunity to do the cuff as well. We love a good dual purpose wardrobe around here, okay? That's like the whole point of building a good wardrobe is knowing that things can serve you in many different ways. That is it for today's video. Again, apologies in advance if I just sound like run down and runny. Yeah, just fighting off whatever it is over here. Uh, I do also just wanna say, I know some of you guys are really missing some of my Thrift With Me content, and I promise you they will still always be thrifting on this channel. I did need to take a little bit of a break from it if I'm being completely honest with you guys. I really needed to explore some other concepts and ideas for videos just to keep my, you know, creative juices flowing. I feel like sometimes you can just fall into this like routine. So just know it's something that I will always enjoy and always love and it will be guaranteed to be a staple on my channel as something that I do but don't be surprised if it's something that maybe comes in a little bit more like seasonality wise, like maybe a thrift with me for spring, thrift with me for summer, that kind of thing. I just don't think that my bank account could handle me doing it on like a weekly basis in the way that I was. It just felt like something that I needed to dial back on a little bit and just, you know, come up with some little bit fresher content for you guys. So I appreciate you guys sticking around with me through all of this. But again, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you guys are new around here, I might have a couple extra videos for you right here and right here. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.